Honda has just rocked the automotive world with a bold announcement that could redefine the future of electric vehicles. The company's CEO has revealed a revolutionary all-solid-state battery one that can fully recharge in just 10 minutes. With its high energy density and remarkable stability, this innovation isn't just another upgrade. It's being called a true game-changer a leap that could fast-track EV adoption in a way once thought impossible. Could this be the breakthrough that finally makes electric cars the unstoppable future of transportation? The next era of driving may be arriving far sooner than we expected. But before we dive into Honda's breakthrough, let's rewind and see why the old champion of the EV world, the lithium-ion battery, has started to fall short. Lithium-ion technology first became a sensation in small electronics. It powered the boom of smartphones, laptops, and the gadgets we use every day. For years, it delivered the perfect mix of energy, cost, and reliability. Phones that lasted a day and laptops that ran for hours felt like pure magic. The trouble began when automakers scaled up lithium-ion packs for full-size electric cars. That's when the cracks started to show. The biggest concern? Safety. Take, for example, the footage captured by Jacob Arm smoke billowing from a building followed by a massive explosion, then another smaller blast. The fire was traced back to a lithium-ion processing plant run by Critical Mineral Recovery. At the heart of the issue is the liquid or gel electrolyte inside these batteries. It may sound harmless, but it's highly flammable. Under stress, it can overheat, and in rare cases lead to fires or even explosion. And while battery fires don't happen every day, when they do, they make headlines and remind engineers just how cautious they must be with charging speeds. But safety isn't the only roadblock. Lithium-ion batteries also struggle with charging limits. Push them too hard, and the ions race through the cell too quickly, causing wear, heat spots, and long-term damage. That's why EV drivers often find themselves waiting anywhere from half an hour to several hours to top up. And for anyone used to filling a gas tank in five minutes, that wait feels like a serious step backward. There's also the matter of energy density, how much juice you can fit in a given volume or weight. Lithium-ion packs are relatively heavy, and while they perform decently, they can't match the energy density of advanced solid-state cells that exist in research labs. A heavier battery reduces an EV's range and affects driving dynamics, sometimes forcing automakers to compromise on design. Plus, these batteries degrade over time, meaning EV owners may experience diminishing driving range as the vehicle ages. Honda, with its background in methodical innovation, had been quietly assessing these next-generation battery technologies for years. Since Honda founded its Marysville plant more than 40 years ago, they've witnessed a massive evolution in technology. And now, it will become the first Honda plant globally to assemble battery packs for their new fleet of electric vehicles. Once it became evident that lithium-ion cells couldn't keep up with the growing demands for quicker and safer charging, Honda saw an opening for something radically different. By adopting solid-state cells, the brand aimed not just to fix small irritations, but to elevate electric mobility to a level that could surpass traditional vehicles in nearly every category. And the first glimpses of Honda's new battery concept charging in just about 10 minutes were enough to capture the attention of the entire auto industry. While many storied companies have introduced iconic models, Honda's identity revolves around the act of engineering itself. The brand might be best known for the Civic, Cord, or CRV, but behind those roads is a culture that prioritizes thoughtful problem solving from the early days. So Ichiro Honda's philosophy was that a mechanic's intuition should guide development as much as marketing analyses or boardroom decisions. This down-to-earth approach shaped the entire company, leading to real-world solutions rather than half-baked gimmicks. In the 1970s, while other companies were dabbling with ideas to meet stricter emissions regulations, Honda introduced the CVCC engine, which was so clean, it met the standards without needing a catalytic converter. Engineering feats like that helped cement its reputation as a forward-thinking brand willing to question traditional methods. Higher energy costs cause inflation to rise, making the cost of living problem worse. Worldwide trade, which is important for modern countries, is also in danger. Shipping lanes in the Middle East are getting less safe, slowing down ships and driving up costs. Ukraine's main agricultural products have been destroyed, which has caused food shortages and raised prices. On top of that, farmers in Ukraine are facing devastating conditions. It's estimated the country's farm industry has already lost 4.3 billion 
from war damage. Geopolitical pressures are also very high because of the wars. Big powers are taking sides and intensifying the conflict. Countries that used to try to find peaceful answers are now stuck in a cycle of rising tensions and mistrust between each other. There is a big chance that things will worsen, which could bring in more powers. The stakes are higher than they've been in decades because of the use of advanced weapons, rising deaths, and the chance of unplanned partnerships. In this situation, Pope Francis's message is very alarming. His call for immediate action shows not only how important it is to end violence, but also how quickly the whole world needs to work together. All countries are responsible for working for peace, according to the Pope, who warned that more damage will be done if nothing is done. His advice comes when the world seems to be falling apart, but these crises are all linked, so everyone needs to work together to solve them. The wars are not just sad stories from the past, they are changing our world. The effects are felt in every region regarding the economy, society and government. Apathy and indifference are spreading in the face of unimaginable pain, testing people's morals. It's important to remember that this is not just a political problem, but also a very human one. According to Pope Francis, we can't ignore the call for kindness, peace, and a coordinated effort to stop things from worsening. If nothing is done, the world could get even worse. The fights in Ukraine and the Middle East have shown us how fragile peace is and how terrible it is when it doesn't exist. It's clear from Pope Francis's message that time is running out and that everyone will have to pay for not doing anything. When the Pope recently asked people to pray and work together, it sent a strong message that hope is possible and needed when things are going badly. His message tells us that even small actions one person takes can make a big difference when combined with many actions. Everyone, regardless of their beliefs or history, can find ways to help bring peace and healing. Even though the world may seem divided, there is hope when people work together to help those in need and make their neighborhoods safer and stronger. People from all walks of life can make a big difference through grassroots organizations. Actions such as setting up food drives, giving money to shelters, or praying for peace together show that real change happens at the community level. Helping people who have been forced to leave their homes and are helpless like refugees from war zones is very important in today's world. This work not only gives people who have been uprooted by war material help, but also brings them comfort. Volunteering at a local charity or giving money to foreign aid groups are small things that can make a big difference in the lives of people who are in need. Charitable work is a key part of getting help to people outside of communities. People who have money and people who need help can often connect through social aid groups. People can help these groups by giving them money, giving their time, or spreading the word about current crises. Kindly share your answers, thoughts, and opinions in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share and subscribe to this channel to enjoy more videos like this. Also, click the next video shown on your screen, you will enjoy it.